Hey y'all, let's check out the Pedal and Purr Cafe. Hey y'all, so I stumbled upon this super adorable cafe that I wanted to show you guys. If you're new here, welcome. It's definitely a vibe on this side. I'm Shy in Second Life and on this channel we check out aesthetically pleasing places in the virtual world of Second Life and I also sporadically do lifestyle vlogs. So if you guys are interested in content like this, go ahead and subscribe. So y'all, I thought this was a super adorable place to show you guys. Going into like the fall season, um, all of the trees and things are transitioning over in Second Life. So it's lots of beautiful reds and oranges and things like that. So I felt like this land was a really nice transition into that. Although it's not a lot of fall colors here, they do have a lot of very florally type accents. Kind of like taking us out of the springtime and kind of bringing us into fall so i'm super excited to see everything that they have going on here but it is definitely adorable so um let me go see what's over here this land is not a very large land but as we know the the small lands they they always pack a nice little punch um i love a good cafe so i'm always up to um tour a cafe I really like that this place is rather small, but they do have a lot of different elevations. You know, I love, I love a good elevation. So we'll look around a little bit before we actually go in. I love these little added features like this little sprinkler set. And then they have they are these beautiful flowers over here. So I really, really loved the feel of this place when I um, landed and I'm just like, oh. A cafe, I know that's gonna be food, and you guys know I love the food and Second Life. So yeah, the new thing that I've been seeing people chatting about um, on my Facebook, on my Second Life Facebook, is the price of Second Life weddings. Now, I have been to a few Second Life weddings, and when I tell you, I always wonder about the cost, because they're always so um, elaborate. Very, very beautiful, very organized, everything is really well put together. So I would not have been surprised if, you know, it did um, cost quite a bit in order to pull a Second Life wedding together. However, the cost that people were saying is like the base pay was not on my radar at all. A lot of people were saying that they started out at like 50K. I'm like 50,000 Lindens, um, is a lot of money in my opinion to bring into second life for a event but you know um i don't know people's um different taste in second life and things like that so i feel like you know it is one of those things to me where i'm like you know it ain't tricking if you got it but even still I'm not, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'll never see anything wrong with, you know, bringing money into Second Life for things that you want. But I feel like 50K is a lot for a wedding. However, oh, a little bird. I want to see the bird. However, I do um, have to take into account that everyone's price is different. I don't know if there are any creators that are kind of like a one-stop shop um, when it comes to weddings. I kind of figured that you would need like a little bit of everyone to do a little bit of everything. So you might need a landscaper and then you might need a wedding planner and then you might need a decorator. Then you might want to personalize cake. So then that's something different. And then you also need a DJ and bridesmaid dress. So a lot of cost. These pears look so yummy and ripe. Um, a lot of different costs would be added into that. So I kind of understand how that could justify the pricing. However, I do feel like there should be some type of cap. Someone was saying like 150,000 Lindens on a wedding. Now I've been to some nice weddings. I've been to some nice weddings. And when I tell you, I'm, I'm not surprised if they spent that amount of money, but I thought that it was very insightful to know. I love this hose. Look how pretty the meshing is on here. I felt like it was very insightful to know how many people like actually spent that much money on their wedding where it was where people are like yeah that's like the base price that's like the going rate for a nice wedding now one thing i will never do is knock somebody um on how they um experience their second life but i just really felt like it was 
it was really, really telling for me. I'm like, oh, y'all really be balling out in here. Here I am, the weekend queen. Now, I must admit that when I first came to Second Life, I really did splurge on a lot of things. Mm, the Book of Secrets. This is super cute. But um, I toned down as time went on. Now, there are some people that they're just like, you know, we, we balls out around here. Um, regardless of how long we've been on Second Life, this is how we like to spend our Second Life. And I don't think it's anything wrong with that. This honey looks so good. But um, for me, after a while, I just was like, okay, I know what it's like to have the gigantic house. I know what it's like to have all the cars and the big lands and things like that. And so I'm just like, okay, well, let me just tone it down a little bit. Um, for me, the main reason why I toned it down was because I started taking a lot of breaks in Second Life. And so I just couldn't justify or have any type of rationale for purchasing a piece of land that cost um, a decent amount of real life money or what I would consider a decent enough real life money to spend on a land that I was barely on. So it's like if you're spending $50, $60 a month on a land that you're on, that you're occupying, you know, that's fine. But when it's a land that you are literally only coming on to pay your tears and then you're leaving because you're not in second life like that because you're taking a break i don't feel like that's um something smart to do it's not something smart that i would do i really love this umbrella it is so pretty they look like little acorns on the side these things look like little acorns so for me, that really put me in the mind frame to be like, okay, well, you know what? I love how all the tables have um, sandwiches and then they have the little rustic table um, and chair set. It put me into the mind frame like, okay, you know, be, be smarter about the way you're spending your money because you're not on here. And so that was the largest reason why I did downsize a lot in Second Life because I do, I, I will take a break. One thing about me, I will take a break. I'll go a very long time in Second Life and then I'll take a break. Now, lately it has not been like that. I definitely don't foresee that happening um, now um, because I am NSAO, I'm doing different things. Now, there were times where I would go to SAO and I was still exploring things like that, but SAO just kind of got a little bit boring. So in the past, um, there have been times where I will, this dessert tray looks so pretty, I will take a break from Second Life. I never really leave Second Life, if you know what I'm saying, but I will, like, I'm like, okay, I don't want to land. I don't want to land because I might only come here twice a week or something like that and maybe I'll miss a week or things like that and I'm like I don't want to be tied down these chocolate cup strawberries look delicious this looks like some Ferrero Rocher candy right here I'm like I don't want to be tied down to having to pay tears and then you decorate your land and then you lose the land and now all your stuff gets sent back in a broken box and you had gotcha items so now you can't find your gotcha items and your inventory and everything got redeemed it's just always like so much extra stuff when you lose your land in second life as opposed to leaving your land it's a it's a task look how pretty this is i love these beautiful plants it has such a nice springtime going into fall airy feeling to me and so um when i feel like I'm like, okay, well, I don't want my land. I'll leave the land and then just kind of be um, just winging it for a little bit until I get back into the mode of like, okay, I want land. Um, that hasn't, I haven't taken a break in quite a while, I must say. This really has been like the longest time where I really haven't um, taken a break. But I think once I got back into experiencing SL the way that I love to experience it and really getting back to that place where I'm like, okay, I want to explore. And I think that was my thing at first. It was a lot, it was more difficult for me to find places to explore. And it's like, as soon as I 
said out loud that I wanted, you know, to be able to explore and to be able to have all these beautiful places to look at, it's like I start finding all these beautiful places and they're so much easier to find for me um, than I ever thought. Search is always going to be your very, very best friend. Um, I do find a lot of hidden treasures and places that people might not necessarily look. A lot of times people will go into search and they'll look based upon um, the highest um, visitor markers. I don't do that. Um, I do that sometimes, but not normally. Normally I do kind of find some like hidden gems and things like that. I don't have anything specific that I look for. I just want something that's cute. Being totally honest, I want just, I just want something that's cute. Oh, this basil looks so nice and fresh. My cousin and her boyfriend, they have a garden in their backyard. I want to look in on this basil a little bit more. And they gave me some of the best vegetables that I have had ever, ever. I mean, we had, she gave us some basil and we had some onions and cucumbers and some tomatoes. They made pickles. The pickles were delicious. Oh God, what else did she give me? Is that all? It was so um some chives. It was so everything was so good. I made so many different dishes. Oh, some green beans. I made so many different dishes with their vegetables. They were so so good. I really hope they do a farmer's market because they are her boyfriend really really has a green thumb. She was telling me about it and he was as well. He has a really green thumb and he's like teaching her about how to garden and things like that. And I'm like, that is a skill that is very much so needed. Not so much where you teach other people if you don't want to, but just to be able to sell your goods, especially in today's time where they are literally just messing with all the vegetables all the fruits just messing with all of the things that um come from nature so i'm like you guys that that's a talent that is very much so needed so i was very appreciative and hopefully whenever they get some more veggies they'll let us know i really hope they do a farmer's market because i would love to shop with them even if they do it out their home like you know I, I i would love it i would love to shop with them because the veggies are really really good so now I want to look at this beautiful count, uh, counter. I want to look at the menu first. But yeah, back to the um, to the weddings. Yeah, I don't. It was a lot of people um, that had a lot to say. I love this menu. It is so cute. The little chalkboard writing on the menu. I felt like there were a lot of people that wanted some things to say. But at the same time, when you go to these weddings, they're so beautiful and they have. Um, wedding suites and things like that it's just like you kind of forget about the pricing now one thing i will say that i have noticed um throughout my time in second life as well as just observing things like this um much like real life not always but much like real life when a lot of these people spend a bunch of money on their weddings in Second Life, they don't last as long as you would want them to after spending all that money in Second Life. This coffee machine or this espresso machine is so nice. And so that is one thing that I have observed. It's like though I've seen people have huge, expensive, extravagant weddings and then they will break up the next day. I've seen it on Facebook. They're like, and it's over. I'm like, you guys just posted. I didn't even go to the wedding, but the pictures were jaw dropping and y'all broke up. It hasn't even been 24 hours. Look how pretty this cake is. I love a good naked cake. You know, I love a good naked cake. I feel like the naked cakes are so pretty and they give like that extra little flair to me. It's like, it shows you the, it's like perfect imperfection. And I think that's why I, I, that's what I really love about a, a good naked cake. It's so pretty. Like this cake is so, so pretty. It's perfect and not perfect at the same time. And so, yeah, I'm like to go through all of that and to go through planning a wedding and then the whole wedding, the, the marriage is over with in less than 24 hours. I'm like, what a waste. 
what a waste what a waste of money but like i said you know um, if you cool with spending that type of money, then I say more power to you. But at the same time, I would think that even though you would spend that type of money, you would want some type of return on investment. These, um, what are these tarts? I don't think these are tarts. I forgot what you call these turnovers or something. They're, they look super yummy. I would feel like you would want some type of return on investment after spending that amount of money. But you know, everybody sells differently, and I always get that, and I always admire that. I love the um, eye for detail. I love carrot cake and real life side note. Um, I love the the level of detail that people sit down and put into talking to designers about how they want their wedding to look, and I also admire the execution of the creators who get all of this together because, uh, yeah, that is, it's a lot to do. It's definitely a lot to do. Everything looks so super yummy. But for me, if I had the opportunity um, to plan a wedding, I don't know that I would do all of that. You know, I love something real small. Let's go ahead and elope. That's going to be my cup of tea.